Hi, it's Donna Mulholland here. My Q&A starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm just going to hang in here for a few more minutes uh, to give people a chance to join us. I suppose there are issues about playing music on Periscope, so I won't play any for fear. I uh, keep some musician from getting their remuneration that they deserve. Again, this is Donna Mulholland. I'm just waiting a couple minutes as we're starting at 1 p.m. This is the Q&A with artist Donna Mulholland, which is me. So we'll be starting in about I don't have my glasses on so I can't read the time. In about two minutes. I'm going to spend some time drinking some tea. I'm using my iPhone but I'm also going to see if I can log in on my iPad at the same time. I'm not sure if I can do that or not. No, I think I'm confusing it. Sorry about that iPad. Or sorry about that Periscope. It says, sorry, we've encountered a, loader, a loading error. Please try again. Or I could be just not connected to Wi-Fi. Let's see. Anyway, thank you so much for joining. I see people popping in. Again, it'll just be about another minute before we start this Q&A with me. I'd like to thank everyone who sent questions. I have some. People posted some questions on my Facebook page, Donna Mulholland, and um, on my Twitter account, and on my business Facebook, Donna Mulholland Studio. So let's see if I can have two Apple devices going at once here. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I do do these paintings. Yes, the ones behind me. I'll mention that at some point in the questions. There we go. Let's see if I can bring Periscope back up on my iPad. Oh, thank you so much. No, I don't think it can handle having me working on two devices at one time. I was hoping maybe I could watch on my iPad as I film on my iPhone, but apparently not. Okay, it's 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Donna Mulholland. I'm an artist from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. And uh, yesterday was the first time that I used Periscope, so today I'm using it to do a Q&A about my art and about me. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. If I don't answer, uh, try again or just have patience with me because I have some written questions that people um, sent in to me, so I'm going to address those first. So the first question I got was from Becky Steele in North Carolina. Hi, Becky. And her question is, how do you decide what you're going to paint? Good question. Uh, there isn't just one simple answer. I decide what I'm going to paint a couple of ways. Uh, one way is totally by intuition, particularly with abstract work. Uh, I just start painting and see what happens. Um, even though I'm working intuitively, I do 
I guess because of experience, do try to pull in some of the elements of design, like uh, values, lights and darks, and um, form, shape, other things like that. Sometimes I don't paint totally by intuition. In particular, I like to work in series. So when I'm working in a series, I would have an intention about that series before I started another painting. For example, one series I worked on over the summer is called Amphitrite's Treasure. She was a Greek goddess of the sea. And the first one probably came totally intuitively, but the uh, the other ones in the series um, were more intentional. So that's two ways, totally intuitively and then working in series. Um, I would also add that I do tend to paint from the inside out rather than painting pretty pictures of things I see externally. And that's just a, a natural progression, I think. Um, I've been painting for... Uh, I started back painting in January 2006 and my first work was mostly in watercolor and it was mostly representational. For a while I did a lot of portraits and things but after a while I became more interested in uh, abstract and non-representational work. So now I do mostly uh, abstract work and figures. Hi Cheryl! <laughs> Cheryl did an excellent uh, Periscope last night of, um, oh dear, it's a California word, I don't think I can say it, but I did put it on my Twitter, at DonnaMew22. So thank you for that question, Becky. My second question is from Jill Badonsky from California. Thanks for the hearts. Hello, Willis to Soto and Art Bates One. Hmm, do I know you, Art Bates One? Possibly. My second question from Jill Badonsky from California is, what's your best tip to watercolor artists who want that loose look but still have the painting look like something? Great question. Uh, I started out as a watercolorist and worked pretty much solely in watercolor for about six or seven years. And it's really only in the last two or three years that I've moved into acrylic. But um, I like to describe watercolor as my first love, and acrylic is sort of like my boyfriend. So we'll see who wins out in the end. I don't think either do. I think I can have a relationship with both, which is one of the beauties of being creative. So my best tip for painting in a loose way, but still have your work look like something. Um, I can think of two or three things. The first thing I think is that's important is to paint with a large brush. Uh, I don't have it right in front of me, but I'm guessing that it would be, this isn't a, I think it would be around an 8 or a 10 round brush in watercolor. This is not a watercolor brush. This is a one of my acrylic brushes. But I'd paint with a large brush. Um, second, I would paint quickly. Maybe even set a timer if you're practicing figures or something like that. Give yourself like five minutes to paint from a photograph or something with your big brush. Do it really quickly. That can really help. Um, a third thing is play, or sorry, is paint to music, particularly something that's uplifting and fast and bouncy. That can really help to loosen you up as well. And uh, another one would be to stand while you're painting, even in watercolor. So if you have your board tilted up a bit, um, stand rather than sit in a chair. And that'll free your arm up a bit, and that will help as well. So those are my tips. The other thing I would say, oh, I had one more. Um, don't draw. Don't pre-draw before you paint in watercolor if you want a loose look, or if you do draw just very, very, very uh, loose gest gestural drawings, not detailed. But I would really advise, if you can, go without the drawing. But if you do want to have something down, if you're doing a landscape and a horizon line or something, just put it very, in very loosely. So I hope that answers your question, Jill. Uh, Jill does wonderful work. She is the creator of Kaizen Muse Creativity Coaching, and she does a bunch of other cool stuff as well. Uh, my third question is from 
Leslie DJ Paquin from California as well. And her company's name is On The Path Coaching. Thank you, Leslie, for your question. Do you have a favorite piece of artwork that you secretly hope never sells? I actually do, and I brought it up on my computer over here. We'll see if I can share it with you. It's a picture of, it's one I have at home, and it's of my three sons in watercolor, and it's titled, I Wish There Was No School and Everything Was Free. And I painted it in September 2009. So I'm going to lift this up. Hopefully it won't be too jerky. And show it to you. I'm going to try to show it to you. There it is. So are my three sons, Matthew, Patrick, and Andrew, way back in 2005-2006. Uh, and I have this one at home on my dining room wall. And I will never sell it. And I have a few others like, like that as well that I uh, will never sell. One of them is the one that somebody was so nicely commenting, the images behind me, and I have one here. And I will note before I show it to you, I think I may have the um, mirror image thing flipped wrong on my camera, so I'm going to have to work that out. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Leslie. Uh, thanks for the question. And this image is uh, it's called Goofing with the Muses, and it was originally done as a watercolor. As you can see, this isn't a watercolor. This is actually a print. Um, at the moment, I'm doing hand-embellished and hand-signed prints of Goofing with the Muses. So I will never sell the original of this. It, but I will, I will sell prints and posters and cards. So thank you, Leslie. And then I have some generic questions. Someone asked me, what are you currently reading, listening to, or looking at to fuel your work? Good question. Uh, in terms of listening, I've been listening to um, some podcasts this week um, where Babeku Batonmiché has been speaking. He's a fabulous uh, business coach that I've worked with this summer, and I've been listening to um, his work. On my with my earphones on while I walk. Um, he's pretty fabulous. You can look him up if you like. Um, I'm also reading a, a biography on Georgia O'Keeffe because she is a, a female artist, famous one of course, so that's of great interest to me. Um, I'm, a great, I'm a great supporter of all artists, but in particular women artists. And for fiction, um, I'm reading a Rosamond Pilcher book I got at a used bookstore. So I think everything fuels your artistic work. That's, um, that's what I think. And the other thing I have on my iPad right now is I'm still working away at Happy Pocket Full of Money, which is a fabulous book, but a lot to take in at one time. That's an excellent, excellent book. Thanks for the hearts. I just flipped the camera by mistake. The next question is, what are your biggest challenges to creating art? I think the biggest challenge I experience right now um, is it's not making the time. I have a good practice of working um, at least five days a week at my studio, but I think Oh, okay, I know what it is. I think my biggest challenge to creating art is probably to turn off my phone and my iPad and my laptop, uh, turn off Facebook, turn off Twitter, turn off Instagram, turn off Periscope, and um, put some music on and paint. I don't know if that uh, rings a bell with anybody else, but <clears throat> yes, screen time is a great blessing. I'm all for it, but it has its pitfalls as well. The next question is, what does having a physical space to make art in mean for your process, and how do you make your space work for you? Well, I think having a physical space to make art is a wonderful thing. I have a studio here in Fredericton at Charlotte Street Art Center. I've been here since January 2013, um, but like the seven years before that, I was working from my dining room table. 
I was working mostly in watercolor then, so that actually worked quite well because watercolor is reasonably small and in, in size. But once I moved into a studio space here, first I had a shared studio and then I moved into my own studio. Uh, I can't tell you how wonderful it was and how it opened me up. I was able to paint big. It means I can paint a whole bunch of different things at once. I can leave them out. Um, I never have to. There's never a buzzer that buzzes and tells me I have to uh, put the clothes in the washer in the dryer. Um, no kids are walking in and wanting anything. Love, love my children, but it's, uh, it's really, really wonderful. And I really, really uh, appreciate it, and it's a great, great blessing. So I'm very thankful to have my studio space here at Charlotte Street Art Center. Next question. Has there been a shift or change in your life or work that has led to what you're making now? I think one of the biggest shifts in my work in recent years has been to work more in acrylic and hello Mr. Potts and also to work on larger canvases. So working in acrylic now and working on larger larger uh, canvases. When I worked in watercolor I worked quite small. I also did a lot of watercolor journaling both teaching online and uh, in person and I was working on you know five by seven pages, which was wonderful, but the thrill of working in acrylic on a, a 48 by 48 canvas, there is nothing like it. So I think that's one of the biggest shifts. Uh, another shift would just be, I think, as time goes by, um, the, with the more experience that you have and with the wonderful support systems you develop, I'm fortunate to have um, many uh, people who are not actually here in Fredericton but are in many parts of North America and even farther in other continents who are uh, great supporters of, uh, of my art and I really appreciate that. And I think that allows me to have more confidence in my work and to believe in myself more. Thank you so much for those of you who are are listening in. Again, if you have a question, feel free to type something in. But I'll continue. I think I've got uh, thanks for sharing, Cheryl. I think I have four questions left. Uh, here we go. Is there something you are currently working on or are excited about starting that you can tell us about? Well, I think uh, one thing that I'm doing right now that I'm really excited about is working with the Goofing with the Muses image, which I showed you before um, here. I'll just show a little one. So right now, this is my most popular image. It's a watercolor I did back in 2011. Um, it's gone all over the world in card and uh, poster form and paper prints. Um, and now I am having it put onto canvas prints which look more like a, a real work of art I think and um, I'm hand embellishing these and hand signing them so they actually have real paint on them and I'm going to be offering those in different sizes and I expect to be announcing that within the next week I'm still working on the hand embellishing and hand signing but it's one of my favorite images it's very joyful and it makes me happy, so I hope that it will make you happy too. Next question, what are you most proud of? Oh, okay. Um, first I drew a blank. I think what I'm most proud of is I'm very fortunate to be a risk taker, which means um, when I came back to art in 2006, it's it precipitated a change in me. It was a catalyst to a big change in my life where I left um, my bureaucratic world, which I did love for its time, but once I got my hands in paint, it catapulted me somewhere else, which was to want to spend all my time uh, making art and teaching. And um, I'm very proud of myself for being able to take leaps of faith. I think. Uh, when I look back in my life, whenever I have taken a leap of faith, it's always been preceded by a period of, you know, self-doubt and um, 
introspection and it's always kind of a struggle until you make the decision and then once you make the decision uh, it's like a weight is off your shoulders and there's not one decision that I look back on and regret so I'm very proud of that two more questions the next one is what do you want hi scurry purry Two. what do you want your work to do oh this is a good question um, most of my work is abstract or figurative. I want my work to make people stop and stare. Um, I want it to inspire people. I want it to make people uh, feel, have feelings about it. Um, and I hope it brings a little, most of my work is happy and joyful and I like to share that with people too. Hello, Karen DDP. And the last question that I received, thank you so much. I think I've got something on my teeth. Hey, the last question is, are you involved in any upcoming shows or events? Well, I do have a few things on the go. The first is that um, I will be having open studios on Saturdays. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. during the month of September and I'll be carrying that on into the fall but I will announce at the start of each month um, which days I will be there. I'm also always available by appointment. Uh, in terms of shows, November 20th to January 11th I'll be participating in the Charlotte Street Arts Center in-house artist group show. And also in December, I'll have a show of paintings in the window at M&T Deli. Uh, I have a painting in the upcoming Kidney Foundation Brush of Hope auction in October. That will be uh, paintings auctioned off for the Kidney Foundation on eBay. And you can also find my work at Sue Lawrence Hair Spa and Gallery, 550 Queen Street in Fredericton, and also at Isaac's Way, also in Fredericton. And you can also check me out on my website, www.donnamulholland.studio. So that's all the questions that I received before. I was going to call it a call. It's not a call, is it? Before this scope, um, if you have any other questions, feel free to type them in. I'll wait a minute or two, have a sip of tea. And I don't see any questions, so I will sign off. And thank you so much for listening in today or looking in. And I hope you have a great weekend. And thank you very much.